In this work, we present an algorithm for the simulation of complex porous sand and water interactions. Simulating scenes like this is especially difficult because of the stiff momentum exchange term between sand and water. We will explain the ingredients used in this simulation. First, we model wet sand as an elastoplastic material with non-trivial cohesion. Here we show the various wet sand locks and dynamics that you can get from varying cohesion. A traditional Drucker-Prager projection introduces a noticeable volume gain when the grid resolution is not fine enough. When we flip an hourglass simulation multiple times, sand can fill the whole geometry as shown by the simulation on the bottom left. This artifact is less pronounced when one uses a finer grid as shown by the simulations on the right. This next example illustrates the effect of volume correction in three dimensions. Without volume correction, the falling sand forms a noticeably higher pile on the left. As in two dimensions, the volume gain is less pronounced as the simulation resolution increases. Semi-implicit scheme with regular constitutive models suffers from artificial cohesion. This gets even worse as the maximum allowed time step increases. To combat this artifact, we propose a unilateral energy density function that conforms more to the Drucker-Prager cone. This is shown by the simulation on the bottom right. Next, we compare the combination of different solvers and constitutive models. The simulations on the left are using semi-implicit solvers, one with regular and one with our modified constitutive model respectively. On the right is a fully implicit simulation with our modified constitutive model. Note that the system in a fully implicit scheme is non-symmetric. To model the interaction between water and sand, we discretize our equations using the material point method. Like a traditional MPM method, our algorithm consists of three parts, transfer of particle attributes to the grid, upgrade of grid momentum, and transfer velocity and other quantities back to the particles followed by the update of particles positions. The main difference between a regular MPM and our method is the use of two distinct grids. We use two types of particles, blue dots represent water particles and red dots represent sand particles. During the particles to grid transfer, we rasterize mass and momentum of sand particles to the sand grid and of water particles to the water grid. In the momentum update, we solve for the next velocity implicitly. We compute force on each grid based on each species constitutive model. We use a semi-implicit scheme where we only take the sand elastic forces into account during this step. This allows a system to be solved to remain symmetric. Implicit solver for velocity is required because of the stiff momentum exchange term in the yellow overlap region. The stiffness of this term introduces a severe time step restriction that makes the use of an explicit solver infeasible. Next, we update particle attributes by interpolating them from the grids. Water saturation of sand particles is computed by interpolating the indicator function that signals the presence of water. Cohesion on sand particles is updated based on their saturation. Finally, we project the sand strain based on the Drucker-Prager model. Here we show the effect of the buoyancy interaction term in a 2D dam breach simulation. The scene at the top only uses drag interaction force while the scene at the bottom uses the reversible term. With various sand cohesion values and drag coefficients for the momentum exchange term we can simulate the phenomenon of a dam breach. As more and more water seeps through the sand, it becomes more saturated and less cohesive, and the levee is going to break. We note that we need to employ the unilateral energy density function to make the sand flow more freely as it becomes slurry.